Hey guys, it's Rogaway here, and today we are doing another exciting tutorial. And um, the topic of uh, this week is a fairly trendy technique that I see popping up all over the place, um, but it's been around forever. And that is double exposures. And so I just did a quick little search in Google here uh, to show you what we're talking about. That's the taking of two pictures and putting them into one. And, uh, you know, in this day and age with digital, you know, Photoshop and Lightroom and all that, it makes it extremely, incredibly easy to do. And uh, you're able to get some really neat effects. Um, so that is, again, combining multiple photos into one. Now there's a couple things that are very important before you get started with this, a couple things that you should um, think about before you start on a double exposure. And the first thing being uh, most important that your subject, whatever that is, is fairly contrasty. Is that a word? Contrasty? Contrasts against the background. So I strongly recommend um, a background that doesn't have very much distraction going on. However, you will notice that sometimes this works, you know, it, it's all in about how you put it together. But generally speaking, if you're doing something like a portrait or whatever, you want to find a photo that um, is silhouetted against a nice, clean background. <clears throat> Another thing that I think is important is that you find a photo um, that matches with what you're trying to fill that photo with. And I'll explain what I mean in a second. So anyways, that's the effect we're going for. And I'm gonna show you how to create something like that. Now in the folder, I have two photos that we're gonna use as our source images. First one is this one, it's called Zen. So we got this girl who's meditating or doing yoga or something of the sort. And so we got this impression of this girl that she is in deep meditation. Um, and I just want to say really quickly that these are not my own photos. These are off of Google. They just really, they serve the purpose well here. So, um, so this is what I'm talking about. Now, in a photo like this, and I don't want to be stereotypical, but she is meditating. And when I think of meditation, I think of something like this, like a Chinese garden. This is a Chinese garden. And so, you know, a place of meditation and relaxation and, um, you know, I think that that's a good fit. And that's what I mean by having your subject match the content that's going to fill them. So as you can see, this photo has a nice clean background. This is a perfect candidate for this. And so let's get started. So I'm gonna take Zen and I'm gonna open it with Photoshop. And as soon as that loads, I'm gonna press Command Zero just to fill the screen with that. All right, so there she is. Now, like I said, if you had some sort of um, something in the background, whatever, you want to go and uh, either use a layer mask or an eraser or something to get rid of that and keep it a, or get it as clean as possible. All right, this one's really good already. So next I'm going to take Chinese Garden. I'm going to open that up with Photoshop. So I got my two tabs and I'm going to use the move tool. I'm going to drag the Chinese Garden into the Zen picture. This is a fairly quick tutorial, but again, how complex you make yours, that depends on you. So I'm zooming out a little bit so I can see more of my workspace. Now I'm gonna press Command T, and I'm gonna hold Shift while I rotate this picture 90 degrees. Now another nice thing about these double exposures, it really doesn't matter how this photo fills the other photo. Just as long as people can kind of make out what it is to give this photo more um, emphasis. All right, so I'm going to press Command T and I'm going to enlarge this photo so that it covers up our girl completely. I'm just going to move it up so I got more of the, um, the temple in the shot. I'm going to hit Enter or Return. And now I'm going to go back to Command Zero so I can see the whole photo. Now, obviously, that photo is now covering up that other photo completely. And what I recommend you do is just bring down your opacity a bit so you can kind of see how the overlap looks. You get an idea of what it's going to look like. All right, I'm going to bring it back up. Now the real trick here to combining the two and creating that 
double exposure look is with blending modes. And you can experiment with different ones and, and go and try a whole bunch and see what they do. But my favorite one for double exposures is screen mode. And screen mode is going to give you that nice blend between the two. So I can still see that it's a girl meditating, but I can also see that that's a temple. Um, so that's a nice blend between the two. Now, what I want to do here is I don't like this temple up here coming into her head the way that it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just zoom out again. I'm going to make sure I'm on that top layer and press Command-T. And it's okay to stretch your images a bit in this case to make them fit better. Because it's such an abstract look, people won't really be able to tell if your photos are stretched that much. All right, so maybe I like that. I don't have that temple coming in on her head, but I do see the temple nicely here. One thing I forgot to mention is in your image that you're combining, okay, not the, the portrait, but let's say in this case the Chinese garden, one nice thing that you could try to do, which is normally a mistake in photography, is to try to find a photo with a blown out sky. What that's going to do is going to ensure that you're going to have these nice edges where it looks like that photo ends. All right, otherwise we would have this real harsh line there, which is, which is fine in some cases also. However, I like that look better, where it looks like it kind of ends there. So one important thing about double exposures is that they seem to work better in black and white or as a toned image. And so that's what we're going to do with this picture. We're going to go to our adjustment layer right here, kind of like a yin-yang symbol. Kind of goes with our Zen sort of feel. We're going to click the adjustment layer and we're going to choose gradient map. I'm going to let that load. Now by default, gradient map has some pretty ugly presets. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull this down and we're going to click this little gear and we're going to open up a different set of presets. So click that and we're going to go down to photographic toning. Now here's something that most people don't use or even you know, know about in Photoshop. This is a fantastic way to add a nice, interesting tone to your image. And we're going to click Append. And you'll notice that all these new gradients appear at the bottom. Now check it out. When I click these, okay, I'm going to get different results on that same picture. Alright, so I can click through the photographic toning and find an effect that I like. Now personally, I like a lot of contrast between my images and the background. So these ones that kind of blend in like this one, with the, I don't like that. I like ones that are more contrasty against that background. Something like that, all right? Or even that is really cool. So we're just gonna click through and see which ones look good. And I'm going through them all just to show you the different effects. Now, I already know which one I'm gonna pick. I really like this one back here. That's the one that works best to, in my eyes. Now, you notice when I choose certain ones, uh, where was a good one here? Um, you see that little specks appear in the sky in the back. And so there's something we should correct right now. Now, because this is a gradient map and it's an adjustment layer, we can go back and change this anytime. I'm gonna leave it the way it is. I'm gonna click the background layer I'm just going to take my eraser in this case. I could use a layer mask, but I'm just going to use my eraser in this case to white as a background. I'm just going to erase back here just so none of that shows up. <clears throat> so you can see that now we don't have anything showing up. So the effect is really nice. Uh, we can see that that photographic toning brought the two tones of the different photos together. And now we're going to add one more adjustment layer. So click the top gradient map layer and click adjustment layer one more time. This time we're going to hit levels. And levels is a nice way to add a more dramatic effect, more contrasty effect to your picture. And the way that it works is you can click along this line and just kind of tweak it to see what it does to your image. The lower part of the scale, the one at the bottom, is going to affect your shadow tones whereas everything up near the top is going to affect your highlights and what you can do is just kind of put a curve that's why it's called curves you can put a curve in this line and watch how it affects your picture 
something like that. All right, now if I wanted to go into more adjustment layer, I can do something like brightness and contrast. And once again, that's um, a layer um, adjustment layer, so I can easily go back and change that after. I can just tweak that a little more just to make it more contrasty, more punchy. The way that this file is set up, it's got three adjustment layers and then our blending mode on layer one. All right, so we can really quickly and easily just drag this image around. And you can see that we can change the placement of that picture uh, with our other image. So if we don't like that effect that we had earlier, uh, we can just change it quick and easy. All right, so we can tweak it after the fact and it's not going to affect our image too much. Anyways, uh, that's the effect that we're going for. If you got that far, awesome. If, uh, like I said, you want to combine more pictures than just two, by all means, go for it. Um, but this is the effect we're going for. It's a neat effect. Like I said, it's pretty trendy. Uh, try it out with your own photography. See what you can come up with. All right. Till next time, keep on shooting.